a security tube so welcome to hack of the day part 5 now in the last couple of videos we've explored encoders shell code and all of that so how do you productize any of your ideas uh, probably in a python script right so that you can write an encoder which can take in shell code as input and that could be pretty much any shell code uh, from Metasploit or from any third party source and the encoder spits out uh, basically the encoded shell code which you can use and then after that you have a decoder script which ensures that the decoder stub and all of that are also automatically generated so in the first video I'll just look at how to write the encoder in Python and the decoder in assembly while in the next video, which would be part six, we will look at how to encapsulate everything inside the same Python script, right? Fantastic. Now, I probably thought it would be uh, not too much fun to take up the same decoder script, which we did in the last couple of videos. Uh, so we'll do something new. But before that, uh, definitely have a look at security tube trainings. We have Python scripting expert, iOS scripting expert, or security expert, uh, Wi-Fi, Metasploit, Linux assembly, GDB, bunch of other things, right? So definitely go have a look at securitytube.training.com and those trainings is what sponsors these free videos. Okay, so a little bit different. What I want is that our encoder script should take the shell code from std in which means we just pipe it uh, from metasploit or some other source and then it actually zors the whole shell code and converts them into push statements basically what i mean is the zor encoded shell code would be pushed onto the stack and then the decoder will figure out how to zor it once again recover the old original shell code and jump to it for execution right so let's get started so let me type in encoder dot pi and i want to read from std in which is the shell code directly right so the way we could actually go ahead and do that is you can name a variable shell code and basically you want to convert that into a byte array so we can play with it and to read from stdn is pretty simple it's just sys.stdin.read right now what we would like to do is remember when you do push statements it basically means your shell code is bordered at a multiple of four typically right you would of course do with lesser as well and I would prefer to just border it at four so what this means is what would happen if the shell code which you read in is not a multiple of four then what we do is let's pad that with nopes so that we always ensure that it's a multiple of four now a nope is just basically the instruction whose opcode is 90 so let me do that so I'm going to say okay if the length of this shell code is not a multiple of four right then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and append a bunch of nopes And this would be there we go looks right so we have just appended a bunch of nopes in there and all this does is ensures that the uh, extra nopes are added based on the number of nopes we need to become a multiple of four now the next thing of course you would need to do is uh, 
go ahead and do the zor right so let's do our little zor loop so let me call this zor shell code now you have to zor it with some expression so let's say we zor this with a Right, of course, this would heavily depend, guys, by the way, on the shell code which comes in because if A is in the shell code, uh, definitely the ZOR would end up in a null byte, which is not desirable. So keep that in mind. And later on, you can customize that, by the way. So for item in shell code, it basically says ZOR shell code plus equals. Actually, in this case, because it's a byte array, you'll have to do an append. And the append would basically be a ZOR between AA and item. Fantastic. Now, the next thing we would need to look at uh, is to convert all of these into push statements. Now, this is something which we've done before as well. And if you remember, because we push it on the stack, we need to reverse the order of the whole payload, which is the last byte is now the first byte and the first, the last, and so on and so forth. So let's call, let's call this reverse. And for item in ZOR underscore shell code, let's flip this. So let's go ahead and reverse it right now. So you can say, hey, reverse is going to be just this percentage x and percentage item. Right? Fantastic. Now let's convert these into pushes. This is something we've done before as well. And if you remember, we would like to push four bytes at a time, which means we need eight characters of hex, uh, which we would need to use. And here, we're going to create the push statements. seems okay I will just quickly do a little test so be warned live typing of code may cause issues All right so I could do an echo and e. then pipe it to coder.py and Basically, if you notice, the push statement has been created. We could actually do a little bit more printing just so that it's clear to us. This needs to be up in here, and I will have this in here as well. So, in case nobs are added, right?
Okay, fantastic. Things look okay. And one of the easiest way really to verify is uh, just make the ZOR byte zero, right? So which means the shell code would remain unchanged. And that's about right. If you notice right now, we see our two nopes in there and BBAA, which basically was AABB 1990, right? So this looks good. Let me go back in here and let me change this to AA. Now let's actually try and get ourselves a piece of shell code, right? I'm going to use Metasploit. I'm going to use MSF Venom, Linux x86. Uh, Bind. What I remember it's shell bind TCP, and the output format would actually be raw, right? So that we can pipe it inside our encoder. Looks about right. Let's hope for the best. Hopefully, I remember all the options. Okay, it says length of shell code received was 78. We added two more nopes and this is how the whole thing looks like. Let's quickly verify that we have no nulls in here, which is the case, fantastic. Now let's copy all of these pushes in. And let me create an assembly file. Okay, let's go ahead and write uh, a decoder in assembler. So I'm going to define global so start. Then we basically have section text. Find the start label and let's go ahead and paste all the pushes. There we go. Now the decoder is quite simple. All it does is it zor all of these out, recover the shell code, jump to it, right? Multiple ways to write. Let's just zor four bytes at the same time. So what I'm going to do is move ESP into ESI so that ESI now points to the swap of the stack. And then it's basically a simple loop where I'm going to move the value 80 inside the loop because there are 80 bytes in the shell code if you remember but to point out if you're going to zor four at a time the loop only needs to run 20 times right so then you have move ebx 0x a, 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 a. now let's write the decoder loop now in the decoder loop it's actually quite simple zor d word pointed by ESI and this happens with the EBX register and then I need to increment ESI every time by 4 and once this happens all I need to do is loop to decoder once the whole decoding happens I jump to the address in ESP which is the top of the stack right does this make sense let me just quickly check the code Looks okay to me. So I'm going to do a NASM. Right, and let's see. Let me do an object dump cut. I just need to verify once that there are no more than seven opcodes per line just to be safe. I mean, the last thing you want is a mistake which can cost you a lot of time. Fine, looks okay to me. Now let's take this and test it. 
right it's a bind shell so let me copy out shellcode.c in here let me paste this in let me run this right something seems to be running now let me open up a new terminal a new tab rather let me connect to the port if you remember the metasploit uh, bind shell by default is on port 4444 which is basically what we took connection now connected and there you go right this basically shows that we have full access via the shell fantastic now we've again gone ahead and written an encoder the question really arises is from a fingerprinting perspective the encoder would probably end up changing every single time we go ahead and use a different shell code we are zoring it etc right but the decoder stuff can easily be fingerprinted. What do I mean by the decoder stuff? Basically the part in here, the bottom part, this part here is what can be easily identified and fingerprinted. So the little assignment I'd like to give you is write your own decoder stuff. Just change these couple of instructions and you can post it in the comments below. Let's see, uh, you know, whether your decoder works or not. And guys, you may ask me why I'm not sharing the code. To be honest, I'd like you to type every single instruction out if you want to follow this video. And the reason is simple. That's the only way you're going to learn uh, if you've never done this topic before, right? So it's pretty much everything is something I'm going to typing in step by step. So I think the pace should just be fine for anyone who'd like to just follow me typing in. And so let me know. I look forward to seeing if anyone can post their own version of the decoder stub. And of course, comments and more feedback always welcome. And I look forward to your comments. In the next video, what we will do is we will try and fit in everything into the same Python script so that the script would take shell code as input and basically spit out the final shell code which can be used for shellcode.c which is the whole decoder stuff everything would be added and basically it would function like a real encoder decoder script right fantastic that's all for this video oh hold on so if you're curious about assembly language shell coding would like to start in a systematic way, haven't done this before, then I can assure you the Linux assembly expert probably is the best course to take. I've spent a huge amount of time giving out over nine hours of HD videos in this course where we start with the basics of assembly, end with shell coding. So definitely have a look. There are sample videos in there and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.